Today, you're going to learn what is the most important statistic in baseball to learn when judging a player's batting ability. What is it, you may ask? Today, I'm going to tell you. Before I start this video, make sure to subscribe down below. Make sure to give this video a thumbs up. It goes a really long way into helping me grow the channel. We're gonna start with OBP or on base percentage. Now, what is on base percentage? On base percentage is the amount of times a player gets on base by any means necessary besides an error or something the batter can't control. So what are things that a batter can control? Well, a batter can control how much they hit the ball into play. They can control how often they walk and they can control how often, well, they can't really control how often they get hit by a pitch, but it measures hit by pitch as well because technically you get on base by getting hit by a pitch. Why is OBP important or on base percentage important? It's important because you need to get on base to win in baseball. You know, the movie Moneyball, which is a great movie, by the way, I suggest all of you watch it, is specifically about the science of getting players that get on base. Because if you get players who get on base, you're more likely to get runs. And if you score more runs than the other team, then you win the game. I believe that OBP is a very important statistic in baseball just because it measures how often a player gets on base. Compared to batting average, which I'm gonna get into right now, batting average isn't the best statistic to use in baseball. Baseball. Why is that? Because it doesn't measure the amount of times a player gets on base. It just measures a little bit of how a batter bats. For example, a walk could is just as valuable as a single in some cases. Because if there's no runners on base, it doesn't matter if you get to first base by a single or a walk, you're still getting to first base either way. So OBP accounts for that. OBP counts walks and uh, hit by pitches, which is very important because some players have the ability to take more walks than others, and that should be counted more so than just being Overlook. OBP is different from batting average because it, it takes into account walks and hit by pitches. What is a good OBP or on base percentage? You know, if you're seeing a number on TV or whatever, how do you know what's a good number? And the general rule is OBP is around 60 to 80 points above batting average. For example, if a batter's hitting for 300, or their batting average is 300, then their OBP is probably around 360 to 380, somewhere in that range. And Further, I found an article from 2010 which breaks down what a good OPP is. Anything above 370 is amazing, but once you get below 320, you're gonna be finding yourself in trouble or sent down to the minors. So anywhere around 320 is a good OBP. It's around average. Anything above 320 is above average. Anything below 320, below average. I wanted also to go over who has the best on base percentage in baseball. And as you can see, Mike Trout, of course, leading the way. If you haven't watched my Mike Trout video, uh, watch it up here. It's super good. It goes in depth of why Mike Trout is such a good player. And as you can see, he leads the league in on base percentage because if I'm a pitcher against Mike Trout, I'm going to be wanting to walk him a lot. So he leads the way along with some guys who you might recognize such as uh, Christian Yelich and Cody Bellinger and so on. What are the limitations of on-base percentage? The one that I found is that it doesn't take into account the value of a double or a triple or a home run. It counts everything the exact same. You got on base, it's all counted the same way. It doesn't take into account more powerful hitters. It doesn't take into account the quality of that bats you use. It's just whether you get on base or not. Also, it doesn't take into account how valuable hitting for power could be because if you hit for a double you're much more likely to drive in runs more so than if you hit a single or you walk. Hitting for extra bases will probably mean that you might score in a run, get an RBI and things of that nature. OBP doesn't measure that. So in conclusion, OBP is a very good stat to use. It gives a rough and dirty estimate of how often a player gets on base which is super important in baseball because without getting on base you can't score runs. Without scoring runs you can't win games and that's OBP. And now we're going to move into slugging. What is slugging and how does it re relate to on-base percentage? So in essence, from what I understand slugging is, it measures the quality of hits a batter gets. Slugging does not include things like walks or hit by pitches like on-base percentage does. It only accounts for the quality of hits a batter gets. I think the best way to explain it is using this equation here. As you can see, so one, so a single is worth one, a s double is worth two, 
triples three, home runs four, divided by at bat. That's fairly simple to understand. How is this different from batting average? Because this one gives more weight to doubles, triples, or home runs. And how does this differ from uh, on-base percentage? This does not take into account any walks or hit by pitches, and it gives more weight to hitting for extra bases, like doubles, triples, home runs. Why is slugging important? Why do you need to know this information? Because it measures how good a batter can hit the ball. It measures how often a player can hit for extra bases. And we already discussed why that's important because when you hit for extra bases, you have a better chance of scoring runs for your team. What is a good slugging percentage? This one took me a little bit more time to find just because there wasn't as much information about it, but I'm gonna tell you what I found. So generally a 450 slugging percentage is pretty good and anything over 550 is outstanding. And additionally, the mean slugging percentage or the average in 2018 was 409. So I'm guessing most batters are slugging around 400 and you know, some go above and beyond 400 as we can see here. Now these are the slugging leaders in the MLB as you can see, Mike Trout still at the top of that list, followed by Yelich and other players that you may recognize. And all of these players are hitting absurd amount of balls, as you can see. All of these players are very good hitters and a lot of them have great on-base percentages as well. There's no secret. So if you find a player has good on-base percentage, there could be a correlation between that and slugging. There's not a direct correlation, but you're gonna see some of those similar players such as Mike Trout, Christian Yelich, and so on. What are the limitations of slugging as a baseball analytic or a statistic. Well, hitting for power is not everything in baseball. There's a lot of players who can hit singles all day and they still contribute a lot to their team. Contact is super important. Getting on base is super important. So a player might hit a lot of, you know, really hard balls into play, but they also might strike out a lot. What's more beneficial to a team? I don't know, but getting on base is important and completely ignoring that for slugging is not always the best move in my opinion. You should be looking at both statistics, on-base percentage, as well as slugging to determine a batter's ability. Which brings us to the finale of the video, which brings every single stat together. Do you wanna know what it is? It is OPS, on-base percentage plus slugging. What is OPS? OPS sums up both on-base percentage and slugging into one number. It literally just adds them both into one and spits out a number. The number represents a batter's ability to get on base as well as their ability to hit for power or hit for extra bases. Why is this important? Because it gives a quick and dirty way to discover what a batter's ability, because it gives a quick and dirty way into looking at a player's ability in terms of uh, walks, hitting, getting on base, as well as their ability to hit for extra bases. It's super important because it brings all stats together. And it's super easy to determine if you have on-base percentage and slugging, you just add them together. Once again, I did some digging to find what is a good OPS in baseball. And I found this wonderful chart. OPS is very easy to understand. Usually 1,000 or anything above 1,000 is elite or excellent. 900 is pretty good. 800 above average and 700 is average. And I like to think of it as 1000 is an A, 900 is a B, 800 is a C plus. That's easy to understand. It's just like grade school and getting grades. You know, you have a very nice grade system there. So easy to understand and easy to remember. Who are the league leaders in, you know, OPS? Arguably one of the most important stats in baseball. Christian Yelich leads the league in 2019, followed by Trout, Bellinger, Cruz, uh, Bregman. Usual suspects you could imagine would be on a league leading in uh, OPS. So there you go, these players hit for power as well as they get on base a lot. So these players are super valuable, if not the most valuable in the league. As you can see, there's only six players above a thousand. It's not super often a player gets over that. So that's what I found shocking. There's only six players in the league who are considered very, very elite. What are the limitations of OPS? Even though OPS is a great statistic, there are some flaws that should be acknowledged. First of all, OPS treats slugging and on-base percentage the same. However, on-base percentage is almost twice as important than slugging. On-base percentage is the more important stat here because it has a bigger effect on run score. Now, even though I said that slugging scores in more runs, getting on base is still really important to scoring runs, okay? According to Fangraphs, it's twice as important 
to get on base than it is to hit for power. Another limitation of OPS is it doesn't take into account the ballpark a player is playing in. And this can seem kind of weird to casual fans of the sport, but some ballparks have more of an advantage towards pitchers or hitters, depending on the location. For example, Coors Field has a higher altitude and alti altitude, believe it or not, has more of an effect on how fast or how far the ball travels compared to a lower altitude, which is crazy to me. I'm not going to go super in depth about altitude and baseball fields. So if you'd like to read more about it, there's a link in the description talking about how different ballparks affect different player performance. And there's another statistic different from OPS, which is called OPS plus. Now, what is OPS plus? How can you make things more confusing, Lucas? Well, it's not my fault. I didn't do math here. I'm just reading what the internet told me. And OPS plus is a better way of measuring a player's performance. OPS plus is a better OPS, really. OPS plus is the percentage of your OPS compared to the league average OPS. So if the league average is 750, that would be considered the league average. So whatever you're, if you're above 750, that means you're above average. And the league average for OPS plus is always 100. So if the league average is 750, that would equal 100 on the statistic scale. It can get kind of confusing with me talking about it. I hope that the wording is good enough for you to understand. Anything above 100 is considered above average. Anything below 100 is considered below average when it comes to OPS plus. And finally, the last statistic we're gonna talk about is WOBA, weighted on base average. I found a video on YouTube when I was researching for this and it basically talked about why you should use WOBA instead of OPS. What is WOBA? WOBA weighs different things differently, basically. You have hit by pitches, walks, singles, doubles, triples, and home runs. And what o what WOBA does is assign a different weight to each thing. So as you can imagine, a home run weighs more than a single. A double weighs more than a single. A, I don't know, a double weighs more than a walk. And that's what WOBA accounts for. WOBA is the most accurate description of how a batter is performing, and it's more accurate than OPS. Will the difference be that much if you use OPS or OPS Plus or WOBA? No. In general, they'll tell you similar things. There's gonna be different numbers just because a batter might perform better in a worse ballpark or a batter hits more home runs than triples, whatever it may be. However, it's gonna point you in the direction, the right direction. OPS, while a more, less advanced stat, will still give you the a, like a correct ballpark of how good a batter's hitting. So if you want a quick and dirty way to determine a batter's ability or performance, Use OPS. If you want a more in-depth, advanced look into how a batter is doing, use OPS Plus or WOBA. Use a more advanced sabermetric. And that's going to be the conclusion of my video. This was explaining slugging on base percentage and OPS as well as some more advanced OPS statistics as well. I really hope you enjoyed and learned something. I hope that I articulated myself correctly. It took me quite a while to learn all of this stuff. Trust me, it's kind of difficult to understand at first and to wrap my head around, but I hope you learned something. Next time you see OPS or on-base percentage or WOBA on your television when you're watching a baseball game, now you'll know what it means. Thank you guys so much for watching. Make sure to like, subscribe to this video if you wanna see more. Thank you guys so much for watching. Have a great day.